Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 13 of my design patterns video tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about an easy design pattern to understand. It is called the adapter design pattern. Now, what the adapter design pattern allows you to do is use two completely incompatible interfaces and get them to work together, just like any other adapter. So let's say you only have two plugs in a wall outlet. However, you want to connect something that has three plugs. What are you going to use? An adapter, which is exactly Exactly what this guy is and you're going to use the adapter pattern whenever the client expects to use a target interface which means the target interface in this situation would be a two-pronged plug however you have a three-pronged plug and that's what the adapter is going to do it's going to convert the three prong into the two prong and just like our adapter here the adapter class is going to allow you to use any available interface that makes sense of course with the target interface and to look at it in a completely different way any class can work together as long as the adapter solves the issue that all classes must implement every method defined by a shared interface so let's look at that as a UML diagram okay so you have the client and he wants to use in this situation an enemy attacker again I'm looking at this like a video game all right so every enemy attacker so far can fire a weapon drive forward and assign a driver however you want to create an artificially intelligent enemy robot now an enemy robot has no need for a driver also it is not going to drive forward it's going to walk forward and in this situation let's say our enemy robot also has no weapons it just smashes things with its its feet and its hands. So what are we going to do? We're going to implement an adapter here and this is what everything is called. The enemy attacker in this situation is called the target. The enemy robot adapter of course is going to be called the adapter and the enemy robot is the adaptee. So you want to look at the enemy robot like it is just any other enemy attacker. How are you going to do that? Well you take the adapter and you're going to store inside of it an enemy robot and then what you're going to do is each time one of these methods is called whether it's fire weapon drive forward or assign driver you're going to point to the correct version for the enemy robot which is stored inside of the adapter using composition this is just an object that we're going to be working with so there's a basic overview of the adapter pattern so let's get into the code and explain it further Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the target interface, and this is going to be enemy attacker. So we're just going to come in here and go public interface enemy attacker. Pretty simple. And then we're going to define all the different methods it's going to need. Now, this is what the client expects to be working with, and it is also the adapter's job to make new classes compatible with this interface we are creating here. So, as we said before, we're going to need to fire a weapon or cause damage in one way or another. We're all also going to have to come in here and drive forward with our attacker and then finally we're going to have to assign a driver and there you go there is your interface and it's all ready to use and that is inside of enemy attacker.java now let's go over and actually implement it inside of enemy tank.java now enemy tank is going to implement the enemy attacker perfectly and our job is just to make sure that we implement all of the methods inside of here that enemy attacker defines now I'm going to import a little library in here just to add some randomness to this thing and then I'm just gonna jump into it we're gonna go public class now if we're going to be creating a tank that is going to implement enemy attacker that is how we're gonna do it and then of course it's going to say you need to add some unimplemented methods inside of this guy and there we are so we're gonna add those in there so pretty easy so then we just need to define exactly what we're gonna have here and I'm also going to generate some random values here this has nothing to do with a pattern I'm just doing this to make this a little bit more interesting and then we need to have this do certain things so what are we gonna have it do well, I'm gonna say attack damage Damage is going to be equal to, and I'm going to go generator next int. And what this is going to do is give me a value between 1 and 10 to be able to use as a random attack value. And then I'm just going to go system out, print line, and we'll say enemy tank. And all of the code is available underneath the video, so you should definitely check it out to help you better understand this. But it's pretty simple. This is one of the easier patterns to understand. All right, so whenever it attacks, 
it's going to do a certain amount of damage here. So pretty easy to understand. And also, again, I'm sort of looking at this like it's a video game. Let's say we want to also have a random movement. And let's say that the random movement is going to be between 1 and 5. That's how we're going to calculate that. Again, this random stuff has nothing to do with the pattern. Just throwing it in there to make it interesting. So now what are we going to do? We're going to go enemy tank moves and then we'll say it moves a certain random distance. And there we are. And then finally, we need to assign a driver to this guy. One thing I didn't do is with the enemy attacker over here with assign driver, I'm gonna need to go string driver name. So once again, that's in the enemy attacker interface. Save that, jump back over into enemy tank and implement this. And it's gonna get a string driver name. And then here, we're just gonna go driver name is driving the tank. And there you go. And that's all we need to do for this guy. So now we need to go in here and create our enemy robot, which is not going to have these methods. And then we'll figure out how to fix that. So just go into enemy robot.java. And this is what is called the abdapt. And the adapter is just going to send method calls to objects that use the enemy attacker interface to the right methods that are going to be defined inside of this enemy robot class we have here. So let's say I want to also come in here and do some random stuff with it. And then we'll go public class enemy robot and then I'm just gonna go random generator again just to make it interesting okay so now our robot doesn't have any weapons however it can smash things with its hands now of course for the most part you're gonna use the adapter whenever it makes sense so in this situation it not having weapons normal weapons like shooting weapons but it has hands so it sort of makes sense for me to use the adapter pattern in this situation and that's very important you never want to try to cram the usage of the adapter and pattern in there whenever it wouldn't make sense. There we go, we're just doing a random one through 10. And then we're gonna, in this situation, enemy robot causes attack damage with its hands. There you go. So you can see the difference between this enemy robot and what it is doing versus our normal attackers, which are like tanks and things like that. So then what are we going to do? Well, it doesn't move forward in the normal way. It walks forward. So we're just going to make it do what it does is equal to generator next in. And then this is going to give me a value of one through five and system out enemy robot walks forward and then movement and then say it also goes a certain number of spaces so there you go all right so we implemented two methods here inside of enemy robot and then let's implement the final one so what are we going to do whenever our enemy robot is approached by a human since this is artificially intelligent it does not need a human to drive it so driver name is still going to be passed here however we're going to say enemy robot tramps on let's say he doesn't like the whole concept of being driven and he's just going to tramp on our driver who tries to drive him so there you go all three of these methods do not work currently based off of the enemy attacker interface so now it's our job to go inside of enemy robot adapter and make them work we just need to have the adapter provide an alternative action for all the methods that need to be used because as you're going to see here in a second enemy robot adapter is going to implement enemy attacker so we just need to go public class enemy robot adapter implements enemy attacker there you are now since it's going to implement that same interface as everything else we're of course going to have to implement all the methods that are going to be needed so let's do that and then using composition of course like i mentioned pri previously you're going to have to create an enemy robot object inside of here and i'm going to call it the robot and then whenever fire weapon is called we're going to use the robot and then of course we're gonna to have to create a constructor for this guy. So public enemy robot adapter, and it's gonna get past an enemy robot for it to work. And I'm gonna call it new robot, and then just go the robot is equal to new robot. And there you go. Okay, so now it's our job to implement these methods down here and make them work with our enemy robot methods. Very simple, just go the robot whenever this is called, smash with hands, instead will be called. So it's just gonna work just quite simply just by throwing in our specific specific enemy robot methods inside of there. So pretty simple stuff. So walk forward is what it's going to implement. And then of course, 
for assign driver. What are we going to do? Go the robot, react to human. And driver's name is going to be inside of there. And you can see it just pops right inside of there. All done. There we are. Enemy robot adapter is fixed. So now our only job is to go into test enemy attackers and see if it works. So we're going to create ourselves an enemy tank and call it RX7 tank, you know, whatever. And this is going to be a regular type of enemy tank that we're going to be creating here, right like that. And then we're going to create also an enemy robot. And I'm just going to call him Fred the robot is equal to new enemy robot and then I'm going to create an enemy attacker and I'm going to type in in this situation I'm going to use the enemy robot adapter to make this guy work so I'm going to go robot adapter new enemy robot adapter and I'm going to pass it Fred the robot because remember that's going to need to be passed over enemy robot adapter there it is see this is what we're calling this constructor right here and enemy robot is going to be passed so that's what I'm doing with that and then just to make this nice and clean I'm just just going to say the robot, which is going to look at this just like it's a regular old robot, not using my adapter. And then what do we need to do here? We're going to go Fred the robot react to human. And let's say it's Paul is the unlucky human that's going to be interacting with that. Fred the robot. And I'm just going to go down here, go walk forward, Fred the robot. And then the final thing he's going to do is smash with hands. So there you are. I created an actual Fred the robot, this is an enemy robot. And then what we're going to do is actually use the adapter to see how they both work together. So in this situation, I'm going to go the enemy tank and then call everything inside of that. So we're going to go RX7 tank dot and we're going to go assign driver and we're going to pass it the value of Frank, who's going to be using my tank, RX7 tank. We're also going to drive forward with Frank here, RX7 tank. And then we're going to fire our weapon. And there you are. So we're going to see what an enemy robot acts like on its own. Then we're going to see what an enemy tank does. And then finally, we're going to see what the robot with adapter does to show how to use the robots and adapters. So we're gonna go robot adapter, and then we're gonna go assign driver. And what is the name of this unlucky guy? His name's gonna be Mark. And then we're gonna go robot adapter again. And then what are we gonna do? We're gonna call drive forward, and then just let it figure itself out. Robot adapter again. And then we're gonna go fire weapon. Even though we know it doesn't have that capability. All right, so we have it all set up. Now let's test it to see if our adapter works. Execute. And you can see right here, here is the robot part. And you can see, of course, it tramps on Paul. It walks instead of just simply moving and it causes four damage with its hands. Then you have the enemy tank. It acts just like a tank, drives the tank, moves three spaces, causes four damage. And here is our robot with our adapter. See, it tramps on Mark, even though we're using the enemy attacker interface here. It's going to walk forward one space and cause nine damage with its hands. So there is the adapter design pattern. And pretty easy to figure out. If you play with it, you'll definitely get it. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.